Okay, so let's talk about um, 2021, okay? We are mm. already into the year, okay? There's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of movement in the, all the different asset classes. How do you see markets in uh, this year? Yeah, so 2021, right? Like, it has hints of 2020, I think, because we're still in the early stages, right? Well, the liquidity uh, rush, is it? The liquidity rush, the, the, the COVID headlines, right? So it's, 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 it's a bit of the old and a bit of the new. But like any other investor, we are looking at this year and saying, okay, how should I be positioned? Where can the big bucks be made, right? And we see 2021 as a bit of a recovery year, right? Because 2020 was so devastating. There will be some uh, rebalancing activity where the cyclicals will come back up and uh, things like like energy, things like emerging markets should come back up and, and, and recover, right? And then on the other hand, we also think that the factors influencing the, the markets are less risky than last year. For example, the risk this year when COVID is, is uh, regarded is more about the rollout of the vaccine and how fast it is rolled out. So that is the risk, right? And that is a much better risk to take than how many people are going to get infected, how many economies are going to close up. And then on the other hand, you have a political situation, which hopefully is better with, with a much more mature administration in place so that you don't have that kind of volatility and geopolitical risk. So it's a bit of a risk on market. And at the same time, you still have the Fed with its large position that it has accumulated last year. So maybe there'll be a bit of a, uh, a uh, minimizing of their portfolio gradually, like they did after the global financial crisis in 08. So to round it out, I would say to investors, even though 2021 should be better than 2020, I will be cautious, I will diversify because when we look back at the last 10 years, and look at what has performed the best every year in the last 10 years, you get seven winners. So it's, it's, it's very hard to predict and you should be diversified because truth of the matter, everyone wants to be in Bitcoin in 2018, I guess Bitcoin again in 2020, they want Tesla in 2020, they want rubber gloves, they want GameStop in 2021, well, until yesterday. So so, so you can't just play this whack-a-mole, you, know? you, need, you need to zoom out, do asset allocation like the pros, pick a portfolio that is multi-asset and diversified and right through 2021 with ease, not with anxiety and, and, and all the adrenaline of a, of a base, base jumper. Yeah, so the fund managers always say that, right? Um, be diversified, um, have a multi-asset portfolio, and that's kind of like the formula, especially for fund managers like yourself, in a way, right? Asset managers, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah. Is there a focus though? Like, um, I, I know on, on Stash you can tweak your portfolio, right? You can actually uh, amp up the risk and you can amp it down, you know. Um, um, sh should there be a more of a focus on, say, say, say stocks, for example? Or sh should there be more focus on cryptocurrencies, for example? And then how, how do you guys respond to, to that demand? Because it's, it's all formulaic, right, in a way. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say it again, right? Like, it, it comes back to the big picture for the individual investor. What is your investment goal? How much do you really need to amass to reach those goals? What is your retirement number, for example? How much do you want to put down on that house? How are you going to pay for that new car? How do you want to pay for that wedding? All these things relate to how this investor invests, right? So for us, the focus is on risk and return. That there, there, there's, there's really no change, but what we have done is make it very easy for people to get multi-asset portfolios and to invest globally. So that's worked very well for us. And then there, are, there is what's next, right? What, what else can we do from here? So last year, we launched Stash Very Simple, which is a cash management product, which is more fundamental than actually uh, you know, the broader investing as well. Because if you don't manage your spare cash well for your safety net and get some return out of it, other than zero, it's really not maximizing the potential of your idle cash. 
it's sitting there with zero, it's sitting locked up in FD. So that's what we've launched in MD20. And we think that that coupled along with our, our global investing portfolios will help people uh, grow their wealth. And then you have all these other alternatives, right? Like you mentioned, uh, you have and pick your single stocks. You can um, pick uh, what cryptocurrencies you like. You can go into equity crowdfunding or peer-to-peer -peer lending. I would say definitely allocate some of your overall investment portfolio towards these benefits, but you must understand the risks that are involved, right? So let's start by single stocks. Single stocks, all well and good when the sun is shining. And, and Financial was on the verge of this thing. Alibaba was flying high. Fund managers were asking, high net worth, you want allocation or not, I can get, get it for you. Lo and behold, the Chinese government pulled the plug, slapped a bunch of regulation, which any financial needs to put in place. Alibaba stock takes the tanks 20%. Jack Ma goes missing for a while. Maybe he goes somewhere to distress. Then he come back and things are kind of even keel again, right? So then at that time, you don't want to be a single stockholder in Alibaba. You want to be well diversified, right? So you've got to be very, very aware of the single stock uh, risks that are involved. So even when you're taking stocks, you can't just go all in one or two or three, right? you need know, five to 10 stocks to really build up a portfolio. And a lot of this, there's work that goes into it, right? Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. So, so that's, that's that. You really need to, to be a bit of an analyst and you got to like it to do it. You can't just passively invest your, your, your in single stock from afar. And then you've got Cryptocurrency these days, right? So even in, even Bitcoin is wow, wow! It did have a very magical run in 2020. It came down recently off its highs. I think down 30 percent in its highs. It's around 30,000 US per, per Bitcoin. It was up at 35 at, at one point, and it's looking a bit soft. So all well and good when it's on the way up, but then on the way down, what do you do, right? Do you have faith in the underlying asset, if you want to call it that? And then there's other coins that are doing well, like there's these new things, DeFi, there's Ethereum, which reached an all-time high. So again, it's about diversifying within the asset class. Then you've got other, other, other more esoteric things, out, but you really need to understand the risk before investing. So very, very long answer, I know, but the individual investor needs to understand risk and return. And then choose what portfolio works for them. And then chunk it up 50% into core balance portfolio is multi asset. And then the other 50%, 30%, depending on how savvy you are, you can play with something else. Whatever, what, what you shouldn't do is go, okay, high conviction, I so-called silang all on black. That's, that's not the way to go, man. That's, uh, that's, that's way too risky for your, for your investor who has real obligations in life, people depending on them and so on and so forth. So how do you actively um, tweak your portfolios because I know you do, uh, you do these little minute changes from time to time, right? What, what mm. drives those decisions? Because you're basically acting on behalf of the, of the investor. Mm. Right? So that's when you, when you, yes, correct. So when you think about it, um, fund managers are, uh, the, the traditional fund managers, I mean, <clears throat> are active investors, right? They, they try and they, 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 they play with uh, security selection and try and pick the best stocks or bonds and try and beat their benchmarks of the market. For us, because we are semi-passive, we do change the asset allocation from time to time, like you mentioned. So we call this reoptimization. Because it's semi-passive, we only do it very, very uh, infrequently and on a strategic basis, meaning mid to long term. If we see risk factors or data that suggest that things have changed from a risk reward on a mid to long term, then we change. So we've been up and running for about almost four years and we, we, we have changed this asset allocation three times. So, so like you asked, what, is the, what are the factors that drive this? We look at economic fundamentals. So we look at inflation, we look at growth. So we look at things like the, the Conference Board Leading Economic Indicator Index, which takes into account 20 uh, economic uh, pieces of data. And then we look at inflation, and then we look at some other factors like uh, currencies. We look at um, uh, we also look at valuation. So all these things come together for us to decide whether there's upside versus the risk and reward that, that we can offer clients, given where we are in this uh, economic cycle, right? So we don't we don't make trading decisions. We make strategic asset allocation decisions based on data to give you the best portfolio for this time, right? So 
let me let me let me uh, expand on this a little bit. So last year, for example, when we saw we, we did a change in May, we the, the system saw that the US Fed was printing a lot of money, and then we saw the COVID situation hit different parts of the world differently. So actually, the system we optimized to include more Chinese tech because it was recovering from COVID and wasn't so reliant on physical economy and supply chains. And then also we moved away from US dollar exposure to more gold because gold is like a currency of its own. It essentially shorts US dollar. So we moved away from US dollar a bit, which we saw was depreciating, which the system did. And then we went more into gold, which obviously did very well last year, 25 percent So these are the little changes that you mentioned. And the investor just has to sit back. We communicate the changes. They see that it's happening. And, and then they stay invested so, so they can continue invested for the, for the long haul. 